glamour. Ferrari wins! Speed. We can see the celebration starting. Glory. Charles Leclerc, he wins in Monza! These are the origins of the most successful team in Formula One history. Scuderia Ferrari. The Ferrari story began in northern Italy at the turn of the 20th century, where a young boy called Enzo Ferrari lived with his family above his father's workshop. Each morning, Enzo and his brother awoke to the ringing sound of hammers below. Their father had wanted the two boys to inherit the family business, but Enzo dreamt of becoming a sports writer, opera singer, or a racing driver. And from the moment 10-year-old Enzo saw his first race in Bologna, he thought of nothing else than making his racing dream a reality. After the First World War, in which he lost his father and brother to illness, Enzo broke into the Italian racing scene. He signed to Alfa Romeo in 1920 and claimed 11 victories. And in 1929, Enzo founded Scuderia Ferrari, a stable of top driving talent backed by Alfa Romeo. The team stormed to victory at the 1935 German Grand Prix, but disbanded two years later. As the dust settled on the Second World War, the team was reborn, this time as a fully-fledged constructor. The world was watching in 1949 as Ferrari famously won at Le Mans, and a year later were on the grid at the Monaco Grand Prix, the second ever race in the newly formed Formula One World Championship. From humble beginnings, Enzo had lived the dream as a racing driver and built a world-class motor racing team all of his own. But in the Scuderia Ferrari story, this was merely the first chapter. Any driver considering an offer to join Enzo's Scuderia Ferrari would have been well aware of their new master's reputation. Enzo famously described himself as an agitator of men. At Ferrari's Maranello factory, only the best was good enough. Enzo was ruthless in his criticism of both staff and drivers as he tried to inspire them and drive performance. One tactic was to hire more drivers than cars. The threat was implicit. Fail to perform and you would lose your seat. It's been said that Enzo did have a softer, sentimental side, but more than anything, Maranello was a high-performance pressure cooker where the only valuable currencies were power, speed, pride, and aggression. Driving for the Scuderia was an honor. Aggressive drivers needed an aggressive race car, and Enzo had an almost singular philosophy when it came to building them. Horsepower was everything, and the epicenter of any Ferrari car worth its salt was a 12-cylinder engine. The man himself once said, I married the 12-cylinder engine, and I never divorced it. So it comes as no surprise that Ferrari's original Charger was the first of many cars through the decades powered by 12 cylinders. Ferrari did eventually follow the Formula One trend for aerodynamics and used other engine configurations when rules and pragmatism forced their hand. The love of 12 cylinders at Maranello remained, and the mid-90s saw Ferrari as the only team on the grid still using ear-splitting V12s, and that sound remains truly iconic. As Enzo would say, aerodynamics are for those who can't manufacture good engines. At the other end of the car was an even more iconic Ferrari status symbol, the famous prancing horse. After his maiden win for Alfa Romeo, Enzo was introduced to Count and Countess Baracca, the parents of heroic Italian fighter pilot Francesco Baracca. A black prancing horse was painted on the late pilot's plane and the Countess passed it on to Enzo. She said, put the prancing horse of my son on your racing car, it will bring you luck. Enzo added the yellow of his hometown Modena and ever since, Baracca's Cavallino Rampante has spurred Ferrari on to decades of unbridled success. Ferrari are without doubt the most successful team in Formula One history, with 15 drivers' championships, 16 constructors' titles, and more than 200 race victories. 
from Alberto Ascari's World Championship win back in 1952 to Michael Schumacher's remarkable five consecutive titles at the start of the new millennium, the Marinello factory has delivered championship winning cars time and time again. And the sheer scale of Ferrari's success has turned the team into Formula One's ultimate driver destination. It's a temptation that novices and superstars alike find almost impossible to resist. The chance to win for the team in red and become part of a racing dynasty like no other. Over the years, this stream of silverware has fueled the fevered passion of Ferrari's fans, the Tifosi. The Tifosi's support is quite simply without parallel in Formula One, so the pressure on Ferrari to deliver is immense. Failure is met with despair. Race wins are the stuff of legend, and in the eyes of the Tifosi, world champions become nothing less than immortal. The physical embodiment of this passion is the sight of the Tifosi celebrating a Ferrari win under Monza's iconic podium. It's a track where Ferrari have seen their fair share of triumph, drama and even tragedy. But it was in 1988 that Ferrari's fate at their home Grand Prix seemed more than ever to be perfectly in the hands of the F1 gods. Just weeks before the race, Ferrari's founding father Enzo passed away age 90. And the victory the Tifosi craved seemed impossible as the dominant McLaren drivers Senna and Prost had won every single race of that season so far. But with just two laps to go, race leader Senna collided with backmarker Jean-Louis Schlesser, allowing Ferrari's Gerhard Berger to lead home teammate Michele Alboreto for a barely believable Ferrari 1-2. There could have been no better send-off or tribute to one of the greatest personalities F1 had ever seen. At Ferrari, tradition is everything, and history is everywhere. From the prancing horse on every race car, to their long-standing home in Maranello, where traditions from Enzo Ferrari's day endure with every victory. Ferrari's pursuit of speed and silverware continues to be relentless, an obsessive passion, as strong today as it was a thousand races ago.